here to talk about homeschooling. I have been wanting to do this video for so long, but as you can see, this took a lot of prep to pull it all out of my schoolroom here. I have so much, and this is what I'm most excited about for, for this year. And if you go into my schoolroom, this isn't even all of it. This is a small scale of what I have. I have so much. I love to homeschool my children, and I just love all of the curriculum and material, and I've just been lucky to collect so many awesome books and curriculum over the years. So I'm gonna show you all my favorites here. This is for the year, uh, school year 2020, 2021, 2021. Um, so we have just begun our school year. We've been doing school for about a month now and it's going so well and we've jumped in some new books that we've had and just loving them. I think so far this actually might be one of my favorite years and I think it's just finally, we've kind of gotten into a groove. Um, we've gotten some really awesome stuff that I'm so excited to show you and talk to you about. So here it is. I hope this video isn't too long. Bear with me. It's gonna be worth it because there's a lot of us homeschooling this year. Not just the normal ones that are usually homeschool, but as you know, almost the whole country has gone to homeschooling or virtual learning. And even if you're virtual le learning through a public school, you have your kid at home and what's so awesome about homeschooling is you have the power to teach them whatever you want. And it's really cool because there's so much out there. And if your kid has you know, an interest, embrace that interest and run with it and teach them something. And sometimes I'll plan things out, but then they, one of my kids express something that they want to learn. And so it's like, oh, okay. And you know, we start learning about that and I can start gathering some books for that. And I usually have stuff already on it. So anyway, I'm going to go over everything and I'll try to go quickly over it, but I'll show you each curriculum and tell you why we like it. Um, and yeah, that's it. So let's get started. Okay, so next we're gonna talk math. I have some really great math things here. Um, I've done a couple different math curriculums over the years. I started out with uh, Singapore math, liked that in um, kindergarten and we did it for half of first grade, and then it started getting just really dry, and my daughter was dreading math, which I felt like for a first grader, that isn't really how it should be. I feel like it can be fun and exciting, and not something you dread, and honestly, I was dreading teaching out of Singapore too. So then we switched to Albeca, which we have loved. Um, she did that second half of her first grade year, all of second grade, and she's in third grade now, and we do do Albeca, but right now I just use that as supplemental. Um, so I'm gonna show you more what we're really focused on for this year. Albeca is um, a, which I forgot to pull an Albeca sheet. So after I talk about this, I will go get an Albeca sheet and I will show you um, kind of what Albeca looks like. So, but I felt like the thing about Albeca that I wasn't a fan of, just as my daughter gets older, the um, teacher instruction, the parent instruction, they they do have a teacher handbook to go with it, but I didn't like it. It didn't click with me. It didn't really give me a well scripted. I like scripted. That's really nice. It makes things go so much smoke, so much smoother. Um, if you can really get the right wording to say to your child, they just sometimes can grasp things so much easier. Um, so if you can find a curriculum that is scripted, that is awesome. And I have two, a couple curriculums that I, during this I will show you that are scripted so beautifully and make it so much easier to teach. So that's what I didn't like about, about Becca because I felt like as she's getting older and her um, what she's learning in math is going to get harder, there are some things that I was feeling like I wish they gave me better, um, you know, just better how to teach it and they didn't provide that, I felt like, in their teacher manual. I'm not a fan of their teacher manual. So let me show you what we're really focused on mostly this year. Um, I'm gonna start with lessons for a living education. 
So I've done this for a couple years and we love this so much. I've never used this as our main curriculum, but kind of a supplemental, just fun curriculum. So I have three levels here to show you. Here's math um, level one, level two, and level three. So what these are, if you're familiar with the Charlotte Mason style of teaching, this is gonna be more like that. This is learning through stories, learning through life, which I think is so awesome for math. What a brilliant way to teach math. If you can teach, you know, because so many times, I mean, how did you, when you were in school and you're doing math, how many times do you say to yourself, why do I need to know this? I'm never gonna use this in real life. Well, these are gonna show your child why they need to know math and how you do use it in real life from day to day. So what these have, um, I'm gonna show you actually the third grade one because that one hasn't been torn apart yet, but then I will flip through the first and second um, level to show you kind of what the material looks like. How it starts is, um, they have a story. So each lesson, you're gonna read a story. This is the review of place value odds and evens counting twos, fives, and tens. So you're gonna read a story and then, and they have it labeled up here, day one. So you'll read the story on day one and then you'll do this worksheet with day one. And then look, on day one, all they do is one side of this worksheet. On day two, they're gonna do this side. Day three, this side. Um, they have it laid out for a, a five day, Looks like on the fifth day, at least in this one, they're doing a double side. Um, not much on this side though. They have it laid out so well for you to follow. So if you're new to homeschooling, um, this is so simple. And this, this doesn't, this is it. This is the book that you get. It doesn't come with a teacher manual or anything. But from my experience with these, you don't need a teacher manual with these. These are so well written, well thought out. I would say that these aren't advanced. Um, so for like the third grade, you could consider it on third grade or maybe I would say a little bit behind, but maybe I um, have that opinion because we were doing Singapore and Abeka, which usually um, is considered about a grade level. And I've heard some people say a grade level and a half ahead. Um, so I might, you know, not just because of, I've been doing that. Um, maybe I'm not totally on track of exactly, you know, what most third grade books would be learning. But, and these are easy, I mean, they don't overdo it. So with this story, you're gonna read a story. You could obviously have your child read the story. We really like to have story time. And so I read the story out loud to my children. Um, and even my third grader will sit around, I mean my kindergartner will sit around and listen to my um, third graders material because they like the stories. And then it's, you know, they don't, it's not overwhelming. Here they have eight or seven, I'm sorry, seven addition problems and a word problem and then a little interesting thing to read about the Wright brothers and then on this side well that was just one day the second day then they're learning about tally marks so they're quick worksheets which is really nice um, the so second grade or this is third grade sorry I'm gonna kind of flip through it so you can kind of get an idea of what they're learning the clocks there addition Traction, temperature, let's see, clocks are carrying the one. So like, I, so this is third grade already into, you know, a month in, day 31, and here they are learning some very, very basic addition. Um, basic addition, double digit numbers, three of them, carrying one. Um, and I would say my third grader, this was, she was learning this, um, you know, in 
her second grade books without Becca. So when I look at this, I think this is super basic and this is kind of, it's just good review for her. She's, you know, she's not, she knows, she knows it, but you know, she still needs practice. So these are great. Um, okay, let's see. There's some further at the end of the book. Ended up getting into bigger numbers, practicing those. Uh, okay, then the whoop, kindergarten level one, or actually this will be more actually first grade, sorry. Um, this is first grade. Oops. A lot of like copy work, practicing writing numbers, super basic edition. This is already like, you know, almost 90 days in. Um, there's a lot of tracing. Uh, what's also really neat about this is it's not just math. They're teaching um, science. Like there was one that my girls really liked where they were learning the life cycle of a butterfly. And the cool thing about these stories, it starts at the, I mean, if you don't start at level one and that's okay, let's you pick up at level three or something, that's okay. Because reading the story is gonna be fine. But the really, really neat thing about these stories is they continue. So in level one, it's about two little kids Charlie and Charlotte and they go to live on the farm during the summer with their grandparents and uh, during the summer they're helping their grandparents on their farm with all sorts of things and during the day they're learning different um, different things about math you know just daily things that they're gonna learn so it might be like um, grandma is like Charlie and Charlotte please come out with me and we're going to go collect eggs because I have some customers that are wanting to buy some eggs and we need to start grouping them into group five, you know, five dozen eggs. You know, Sam wants to buy five dozen eggs. And so the children start learning about um, what a dozen is and how they group them and then how they're selling them and how much they cost. And so it's such, it, the stories are written really well and they continue on um, through the whole book. It's all about Charlie and Charlotte at their grandparent, grandparents' uh, farm. Level two, it picks up where that left off and Charlie and Charlotte are now, came back from their grandparents' farm. It's the end of the summer and they're going to start homeschooling with their mom. Their mom is almost nine months pregnant. They're learning about um, you know, how long a baby is in the mommy's tummy. So there, you know, there's some math problems about like nine months and you know, she's six months and she has to go nine months. So how many months does she have left? Um, so it's really, it's really clever and it's so neat and my girls just love it and grasp it. So this is kind of our fun math. Um, and then there's level three, which we haven't quite started yet because we were just finished, we're finishing up level two. Um, we didn't do this as much last year. So with level two, how I'm doing it is we're gonna try to do level two and level three this year for my third grader. And we do this like once or twice a week, but this is easy for her. So what we do is we read the story one day and she gets all five days worth of work to do. And she gets it done quick. So our plan is, is to zoom through level two because I didn't get this last year and we were just gonna start level three this year, but she likes the story so much that she was like, I don't wanna skip level two, can we do that one? And she wanted to read the story with it. So that's why we're doing it that way. So this is like our fun math. Okay, so moving on. Oh, and I should mention, um, this is a religious kind of math, kind of, I guess. It's not secular, but, um, really say there's been occasional time when you know they've mentioned God or um, but I not really and if it's something you're not comfortable with you could easily skip over it um, it's so it's so easy and so well written and really fun that I wouldn't let that deter you scare you away from it because it's really not and if you pre-read it you know you could skip over what you need if you're not comfortable with that. But um, I would say it's, you know, it's, it is, um, touches on it a little bit here and there, but not um, overly. So, okay, next, um, I'm gonna save our main math curriculum that we're doing this year for last. 
gonna show you a few other things. This is a, which I just received this. We haven't actually done any of these yet, but we're super excited about it. It's a song book for Skip Counting and Edition Facts, and I got it from Matthew C. Um, in this book, it has the CD, and it has all these songs. So this one is learning Skip Counting by twos, and it has the music with it. Um, Here's the skip counting by threes. Skip counting by fours. So I'll just give you an idea, this is like four tenths is 40, four fold is four times more, four seasons in a year, four twenties in, in four twenties is four score. Four balls, you're on first base, four sides in the great square, four, four quarts in a gallon make, four legs beneath a chair. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 20, four, oh, sorry, 24, 28, 32, 36, and 40. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, and then comes 40. So kind of fun little catchy, obviously I did not sing that to what it needs to be, but um, we're looking forward to that. This does have, um, it's split up into more like the first half of the book is biblical songs on numbers. And then the second, second half of the book is just, you know, just plain, just normal. Um, no biblical references at all. So I don't, think we'll be focusing too much on the biblical ones at all but more just on the ones that are not but so if um you're interested in either one of those this would be great and if you're again you're not overly religious and you don't want to do biblical songs um it might be worth it to just you know at least get it for the other songs okay so there's that um the next one we we've been doing this we actually read this at night as their story time and this is an Usborne book, Understanding Money. And it's fascinating, um, you know, I got this and I wasn't sure how much they'd like it. My third grader, she's just always loved money. But, but this is in depth, actually. It's fun, it's written out fun, great pictures, but the topics that they cover, they're extensive and both my third grader and my kindergartner love this book. And we'll usually read one or two pages a night and sometimes they're like, more, more. And it's just fascinating how much they love it. So the story of money, the rise of the coin, um, in the bank, so where's my money? So. It, and it's um, it's done really well, but it is quite complex. Um, but I guess I mean they are grasping it and they love it and seem to understand it. But even as I'm reading this, I'm thinking, you know, that it's it's complex um, concepts, and it's fascinating to me that they love this so much. You just never know what your child is going to like and what they're going to be good at. I'm into. So anyway, um, that's a really interesting book and a great way to teach about money. And okay, more than just like counting coins. Okay, another one that I'm gonna talk about and I'm so excited. I'm kind of thinking actually after we finish this book, we're gonna start doing this book as like a story time or maybe like every now and then during the day. We've done I think two chapters here. But this is Life of Fred. This is the Apples book. This is the first book in the series. Um, so this would be considered probably like kindergarten, first grade kind of age. These books go all the way up through high school. Everything you can think of, they have calculus. And these are such a fun way to teach math. Again, similar um, to what these are. Math through stories. And these are funny too. If you're on Facebook, I encourage you to check out Life of Fred page and like it. They post the funniest things on there. And that'll give you an idea of kind of what Life of Fred is like. Um, it's just funny. It, back here it says, why choose Fred? Well, this is the gate years to, gateway to 
Gateway to Years of Happy Math. So The White Shoes Fred, it's fun. Readers have called these books off the wall, totally undignified, wacky, and brilliant. It's comprehensive, more math in Life of Fred than any other homeschooling curriculum that we know of. Motivating, not just drill and kill. Fred has a need for it in his life, then we teach it, no more. Where am I ever gonna, no, it's no more your child asking, where am I ever gonna use this stuff? Again, so that's why I love these like kind of Charlotte Mason kind of style um, math lessons for through living education, through stories. That's exactly how it teaches you. Um, it's durable. Not to be written in, not to be written in. You don't, you know, it's not a workbook. Um, Smithsonian binding. I guess that must be a binding that holds together well. A gloss fill, film laminated cover. One copy for kids and grandkids. It's a book you're gonna wanna hang down. You're gonna wanna keep. It's clearly written and it's cheap. They are cheap. So I'm excited to dive into these books and who knows, the more we get into it, I don't know if it might become one of more of our main curriculums. I don't know. But from what I know about these and from what I've read of it, I love them. Okay, let's talk about the main curriculum that I have chosen for this year. And it is called Right Start Math. First off, let me just start by saying this is not a cheap math curriculum. This is a very expensive math curriculum. But I did a lot of research finally before deciding this and so far we're loving it and I think it's worth it. So I have um, level A, which is for my kindergartner. And since this is a new math, brand new math, totally different way of teaching it. I, and I don't know if this was a bad idea because so far uh, my third grader is you know, totally grasping everything and picking it up quickly. We'll continue on with this and if so, I'll jump her up. But I chose level C, which is second grade instead of going with level D for her third grade. Um, and I did that because this math is, um, it's all game-based. And I didn't know, and a lot of the terms of, you know, when they're talking about the math is very different than anything that we have done. Um, so they're learning the math way to say certain things. So like the other day we did a lesson um, and they were learning that the math way to say 40 is four tens. Um, so that's not anything she's ever learned in Alpeca. And so that's why I decided to take a step back and take her do the um, level C, which would be second grade, to see if she is grasping all of the new concepts. Um, you know, since my, my, this, she's, my other daughter's gonna be starting a kindergarten, so it's gonna be easy for her to go on. But, and we'll see if I, you know, halfway into the year, if I'm like, this is unnecessary that we're doing second grade and I'll just immediately jump her to third grade, I don't know. So um, that's what I'm doing. I've done a, I did a lot of research before this. I watched some interesting videos by a woman who was a calculus teacher, and um, then she decided that she was going to homeschool her children, and she was had done a couple different masks, and then she came across this one and decided to try it. And this was by far her favorite math. She thought it taught math concepts so incredibly well. Um, it made uh, your chill, it makes your children really strong at mental math. You they can each just easily do mental math in their head. So what this came with and why it's so expensive, it is, comes with a very large um, manip manipulative set. Okay, so once you buy the manipulative set, it's gonna last you years. It's not like you have to keep buying the set every um, year. So your first time you buy it, that's gonna be the most expensive. And then after that, you're always just gonna have to buy um, the lessons and your worksheets. So what it comes with, um, so this is lesson A. This is the book. Now flipping through it, it looks kind of boring, dry, but when you get down to it and you read it, the lessons are quick, they're fun, um, they're nicely scripted for the parent, which I love. So here in lesson 26, activities for teaching, it goes through exactly what you do in order what to say to your child, possibly maybe what your child should be saying back to you, 
And then all they have on this side, explanations. So something that you might be teaching, then they have an explanation for it. So here that they're doing something um, where they're counting on an abacus, writing six round and round. So this, remember, this is the kindergartner book. Um, and it says this activity introduces one-to-one -one correspondence in a meaningful context. Um, so it's so far, I mean, we're not very far into it because it just arrived. So we're only done, I think like four lessons um, so far. I am loving it. And then it also comes with worksheets. Now the worksheets, it is not overkill at all. It is simple. And we haven't even done a worksheet yet. It, It'll cut several lessons in and finally you'll do your first worksheet. This one looks like patterns and rectangles, you know, I mean, I don't know what you do. There'll be a description in here what you're going to be doing with this book. So pretty easy worksheets. They're going to be fast. So there's that. That's the kindergartner book. This is the second grade level. Looks like, oh, back here. Uh, they go all the way up to level H. So D would be third grade fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh grade. And this looks exactly the same as the kindergartner one. So every page, the lessons always are just two pages like that. So you lay your book flat out like that, and there it is. Um, oh, this is also nice. Up at the top, well, they tell you what the objective is of what you're gonna be learning in this lesson and the materials that you need. So before you start your lesson, here you're gonna need your math journal, um, an abacus, which is this, your math card games book, which is this, and worksheet six. And so then it goes over your lesson. Um, just really well done, really well done. I love it so far. So this is the lessons book. And there's no writing involved in this. This is just more for the teacher. Um, here's the worksheet book. And again, even for this second grade level, not overkill. You know, the worksheets are one page simple. Here's draw star according to the instructions below. So you're trying to do exactly, you know, copy this same star. Um, so that's their workbook. And then this is the math card games book which is, you're not just gonna open this book and start playing games out of this. It'll become, you know, in your lesson, it's gonna say for this lesson, you need to do, um, like the other day we played um, a game called Go to the Dump, which my girls thought was so fun. And so you find Go to the Dump in this book and it tells you, you know, how to play it. So Go to the Dump was, and you get all the cards and everything that you need for all these games. We had car, our basic number cards, um, I think like one through 20, I think maybe, if I remember right. And it was kind of like Go Fish, except they were adding to, maybe the cards were just one through nine, but lots of them. I think, I think they were adding to 10. Um, so, you know, if they had a nine in their hand, they'd ask, you know, do you have a one? and then you know, as you put down your pairs of 10. So it was super fun if you if they say, no, I don't, have a t I don't have a one, then they say, go to the dump, and then they pick out the uh, pile and get a card. So really fun way, I mean, that was a great way to, you know, having their um, math facts of what makes 10 quickly, and even my kindergartner was having fun with it and kind of catching on to all the different numbers that equal 10. So now I'm gonna show you the, all of, the, I hope I pulled it all out. Um, all of the manipulatives. This thing, super cool. We haven't had to use this in a lesson yet, but we've played with this and really fun. So like, let's say we're gonna do five, what's, there's two fives here. Or here, I'll show you, I'll take, um, so you see. What's five plus three? It is eight. If it balances, let's see if it balances. If it balances, it's the right answer. And if you were to put it on the nine or the seven, 
you know, it's suddenly, it's not like you have to really look. It suddenly like shoots up or shoots down, so it's obvious. Um, you can also do multiplication on this. So like, you know, what's, what is six times four? And I had told my child to, you know, start putting them on the tens. And then you know, she put a third one on and oh, okay. So she took that third one off and then she was going down like, well, I don't know, what is six times four? I can't see that number there. Then she was like, I think that might be it. So she counted, okay. So we have two of those, 10, 20, and then, oh, my hair touched it, 24. So she felt like six times four is 24. So really fun. Um, we haven't actually done any actual games with this, so there's probably other ways to use this. Um, so we're excited. I thought that was especially cool. Here is their abacus that they use. Um, this abacus, in the early years, they use it like this. And then when it gets harder, then they use it like this. And as you can see, they have their ones, their tens of hundreds, thousands. Um, I haven't, we haven't done anything where we use it like this yet, so I'm not exactly sure um, what they do it like this, but so this is gonna be fun to use. Here is when they'll be learning, you know, this is their um, geometry panels. Comes with all these different shapes. There is a bunch of rubber bands in there for another thing. There's so much, so I got this uh, white box just to keep everything in. Um, color tiles, which actually we've been using quite a bit. We've been using these a lot with um, my kindergartner so far. She's been working on patterns and grouping and she really likes that. She's especially into patterns. It has a book, Yellow is the Sun, with my kindergartner. We've also been we read this book at the start of every lesson and it comes with um, Yellow is the Sun CD too, which we've listened to the first song on this, which is the same as this book. And I think there's more songs on here too. Um, this clock, really cool, because you can never find these. As you move the big hand, the little hand goes around. I've been through several different clocks where you know it's you're trying to teach this but it's a hard concept for them to kind of understand how this hand moves slowly while this hand is moving faster around and this does exactly what you are wanting to teach them really cool um, tally sticks we've been using a lot of these too recently especially with my kindergartner here's a so and you get all these card decks that are gonna go with games this is the fraction card deck and the cards are just like normal playing cards. They're nice and thick, um, they're slick, so half. And then they have a fancy design on the back. The design, as far as I know, isn't for anything specific. They're just, you know, the back side of the card. Okay, the basic number card deck. Actually, those were the cards that we used for the Go to the Dump game. And again, it's just like a normal card. And then the backside has this cool design on it. Um, place value cards. These are neat. So you have all your hundreds numbers, all your double digits. Um, do -do. Your single digits and your thousands numbers. So these are neat for play, uh, teaching uh, place value and you can stack them on top of each other. Like so. And one game I played with my second grader the other day that they had us play was, um, it would be, we'd take the, just the double digit, the two digit and the one digit cards and I'd make a number for her and she'd make that number on here. So, you know, I'd give her like 50 and one. And so, and she had to say it two different ways. So she'd be like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 
and one. And so she would say that's 51, or the math way of saying it is five tens and one. So that was something that she learned um, that, you know, a math way of saying something that was something that was never taught in any of the other curriculums that we did, which is exactly why I decided to jump her to back back to second grade, just so we could kind of get a grasp of all these different concepts that we haven't inter been introduced to. Um, and we'll see how she, you know, grasped everything. But so far she's picking it up easily. Okay, so there are those. Here's some cards that are like the abacus. We haven't used those yet. Here is a clock card deck, so cute little, cute little tiny cards. They saw these cards and they said, oh, those would be perfect cards for our American dolls. Um, oh, and this is like, I guess you're gonna be making times with that. And I would soon be using your clock with this game probably. The multiplication card deck, the money card deck, and again, everything has cool designs on the back too. Let's see, on the back of the multiplication card deck is um, the multiplication table. This is the money card deck, and this is just, let's see it. I haven't looked at everything yet. It's all color, so here's like your dimes. It comes in color. You have all the different coins. This one. It's nothing written on it, but it's these little square cards with that will probably used for quite a few different games. Um, fractions. These are really, this is a neat way to teach fractions. Um, well, you have your longest one. And then the next one would be half and half. And then the next one would be quarter, 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 and so on and so on. And you know, there are all different sizes there. So we haven't used that, but I'm excited to teach that. That'll be fun. Um, comes with a calculator. I did read something about how while they don't, you know, encourage the student to use a calculator all the time, they do um, find it important to teach different ways of, you know, working out problems. Um, so there'll probably be occasionally where they get to look a cap um, a, on the calculator. Tan, a two sets of um, tan grams. So I actually have a giant set of those. My girls love those. So. But obviously you don't need a ton for this, they just give you some. What is this? Base 10 picture cards. This one. Hmm. This one just seems to be the basic number of cards also. I thought I just pulled out a stack of those. Centimeter cubes, money, which we actually already have a big set by Melissa and Doug, which if you're looking to get a really nice set of money, um, I highly recommend the Melissa and Doug set. It comes with all of the um, bills and all of the coins and in this really nice wooden box and just this really nice, good quality. And these are, I don't know what these are going to be used for, but envelopes. They have this printed on it. I have no clue what this is. We guess we will find out. And then these really cool wooden geometry solids. Twelve of them. So that is everything with Right Start Math. Um, we're really excited for this. I'm super excited to teach a different way of math and make it more game-based and um, get their, gets their uh, mental math really strong, which I think will be really nice. So anyway, that is my math. Let's move on to the next one. So I mentioned when I had all of my math out, two other maths that I have used and I do still currently use, but now more as a supplemental. So let me show you those. So um, Albeca, so I just pulled out my second grade workbook that, um, and um, so we've done first, second, and then also I have third. Um, and with the third, I didn't pull that one out because I have ripped up all the pages like and to kind of spread throughout the year in a binder. Um, so to give you an idea with, and I really do like this math. So she continues to still do this math, but we're also, um, 
we're not gonna do as much of this and um, we're gonna be doing the right start math to kind of make math a little bit more fun and exciting and play a lot of math games. And then also those living maths, which I love. And those are kind of our fun maths, but also the right start math is gonna be a fun math too. So what I like about these, um, now Albeca is considered to be a little bit harder. Um, I usually have heard about a grade level ahead. I've heard some people say that it's a grade level and a half ahead. Um, so I really do recommend this math. And this math is not secular. Um, I don't know why. There's nothing religious in these books at all. But with the charter school that we're with, I can only spend my money on secular material and they won't buy these books for me because it is um, not secular. But there's nothing in these at all that is religious at all. So don't let that scare you away. Uh, really great math books. And what I like about these is that they give you a taste of everything, which is why we switched to this. Because um, when we switched in first grade, I felt like I wanted her to be learning about clocks and measurements and not have to wait to learn what a clock is until the very end of the year or learn how to use a ruler, you know, until spring. Or... So that didn't make sense to me, to, um, which is kind of what Alpeca did in our first grade math book. So we jumped, we went to this. So here, you know, they're working on, they have three problems of writing the sums. Write the difference. Multiply, multiply by zero. They just have four problems of multiply by zero. Uh, finish the web number. Here's count by hundreds. So they're gonna work on some geometry stuff, more sums and differences, and then a little word problem. So they're giving you like kind of a taste of everything. It's like a spiral, spiral approach. They keep spiraling back around to everything. Um, so, and we like, they have some pages that, you know, that are fun. Um, the snail here. So I do really, really like this. And I will still continue to use it, just not as our number one math. Um, I think right now, this this year, our number one math is going to be Right Start Math. And then this, I still plan to supplement um, for my third grader, except she has, we have arithmetic three. And then for my kindergartner, what I'm also supplementing for her is, this is um, Singapore math. And I really, I do like the Singapore math for kindergarten. I wasn't a fan of it for first grade though. First grade, I felt like just got way too dry and they focused on, you know, for like, it, it felt like, you know, for like two, three months, all they're doing is addition. And once they master that, then they move to subtraction and they spend weeks on that. And then they master that and then they move to like the next, next topic. I didn't like that approach. I wanted something that was more like, you know, getting kind of taste of everything. So, and colorful too. The, at least our Singapore book that we used for first grade was just very dry and black and white, and but I like the Singapore book for kindergarten. It's fun, colorful, neat pictures. There's a lot of cutting and pasting, which is fun. So I had forgot to pull these two books out, but we do use these um, as a supplemental. So we do a lot of math, um, lots of different maths, but all worth it. So that's it. I'm gonna show you now. Let's move on to the next subject. Okay, now we're gonna talk all about language arts. I have some really, really great curriculums here that I'm really excited to show you. I have my first library, Handwriting Without Tears, Spelling You See, Get Ready for the Code, Explode the Code Beyond the Code, First language lessons for a well-trained mind and all about reading. Some, these are all excellent, excellent curriculums. So let's see, the first one to talk about, let's talk about this one. First language lessons for a well-trained mind. I have a kindergartner and a third grader, so I decided to start with level one. And I am loving this book. And so are my children. They just, I mean, they are grasping it so well. They really enjoy it. I had mentioned before that I like um, curriculum 
that is well written for the parent, the teacher, and scripted, where they tell you like exactly what to say. And this one does does just that, and it does an excellent job at that. Um, it is so far we've been working on, you know, what nouns are, common nouns, proper nouns. They have everything about that memorized. They've picked it up so quickly. Um, they've been memorizing poems in here. Um, they are loving it. They memorized this poem called The Caterpillar, which is, let me read it to you, it's super cute. Brown and furry caterpillar in a hurry. Take your walk to the shady leaf or stalk. May no toads spy you. May the little birds pass by you. Spin and die to live again a butterfly. And they love saying this poem. They like to you know, tell anybody they can tell this poem to, this poem. And it's super cute. And my listening to my five-year-old say it is just adorable when she tells me this poem. So we've done about 10 lessons in this book and just loving it. it like one day here, we talked all about this, um, this, um, this famous picture. Then after that, we decided to kind of make it into an art class and we, we were trying to paint this. So really fun. Again, this is level one, which is technically for first grade, but I wanted to do something that um, just like one one lesson that could be for both my kindergartner and my third graders. So I decided to just do level one, and I haven't done a ton of this kind of stuff with my third graders, so I, you know, I didn't feel that it was, you know, that she's needed to start higher up. And with level three, which is what a third grader would technically be, it is um, very heavy in dictation. And she's doing dictation and spelling, you see, so wasn't too worried about, you know, not getting that with this book. So they are loving it. I am loving it. I highly recommend this book. It was cheap. I think it was about $11 if I remember right. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Um, I'm just going to show you this written real quick. This is from Usborn. This is my first reading library. So many books. Really cute books. They start out easy. Uh, I have the greens separated here because they my um, daughter has read all these at the end and she wanted to read these so we were kind of putting them at the end the ones that she read the ones with the numbers are the easiest then the orange and the purple um, this is the next easiest and then this is the hardest although these seem pretty similar but here to give you an idea the deep dark woods big letters Great pictures, fun stories. Um, so that's the, one of the easier ones. Let me show you in like a purple. Oh, get in there. Here is the daydreamer. Oh, well that one's pretty easy too. There are some that get harder. Maybe I have it mixed up. Um, anyway, but good for you know new readers, or you're not so strong of a reader. This is pricey, but my kids like it. And I think it's well worth it. I think it was about seventy dollars if I remember right. Okay, next let's move on to we're gonna I'm gonna show you spelling. You see. Um, I decided to go with this spelling curriculum for my third grader this year because just after years of um, you know, getting more familiar with the way she learns and um, I thought this would work well for her. She's always kind of struggled with reading a little bit so I thought the repetitiveness of this also might help her quite a bit. Um, so it starts out, you have um, the student workbook and the instructor handbook. And then it also comes with a set of erasable colored pencils. So here's a lesson. Um, on day one, they read this poem of Little Boy Blue, and then they, with their different colored pencils, they're instructed to. So here they do yellow to circle all the vowel chunks, and then they rewrite it. And so I have her read this by herself go through, circle all the vowel chunks, and then she rewrites it. Day two, she does the exact same thing, and then she rewrites the second half of the poem. Day three, she does the exact same thing, she reads it, 
out loud, circles all the vowel chunks, then again, she rewrites the poem. Day four, again, she rereads the poem, circles all the vowel chunks, and then it's no rule day on this side. And she gets to draw, I guess she forgot to draw her picture, draw a picture of a rhyme or write your own story. Be creative and have fun. Actually, I guess she didn't have to draw. So she um, wrote her own story called Me and the Yeti. She wrote, I woke up one morning and gave my sister a hug. Then I walked home and I brushed my teeth. Now, when I was reading in here, I haven't read all of the instructor handbook yet. I'm pretty sure they said to really just let your child go with it on this day. Don't be like over their shoulder trying to correct their punctuation and their writing and just really let them have a no rule day. Be creative. If they get some words misspelled, that's okay. And then day five, again, we haven't done day five yet. Again, they read the poem, they circle the vowel chunks, and then it's dictation. So you're going to you know, remove this page from your book and so they can't see this. They have the first word of each sentence. And so you're going to say to them, little boy blue. And your, your, your student will write, little boy blue. Go as slow as you need. Um, so by day five, hopefully they should be able to pretty much write that. And so it's like that each week. So week two is I'm a little teapot, short and stout, and they're gonna do all the exact same thing. As it gets further along, um, they're gonna be like here in this one, they're gonna be circling consonant chunks, vowel chunks, and bossy R chunks, and learning all about those different things. So I'm really liking this so far. I think the repetitiveness of it is going to work really well for my daughter, who's always kind of struggled a little bit with reading. Um, so I think works. I'm excited for this. I don't know how excited she is, but <laughs> that's just how it goes sometimes. Next, let me show you these. These are super fun. We've been doing these for a couple years and I love these. Um, and I'd say my daughter likes, but that's okay. I think they work well. So I have get set for the code, beyond the code and explode the code. This get set for the code, Hold on, my dog is barking. Oh, maybe she stopped. Oh, well, she starts again, I'm gonna go get her. This gets set for the code B is for my kindergartner. She did A in preschool. So we're starting up B here. Hold up real quick, I gotta go help my dog. Okay, so sorry about that. My dog, she's 13. She is um, a little Cavalier King Charles and she, her favorite place to sleep all day is our leather chair and she needed help getting up into the chair. So that's what she was barking about. Okay, so anyway, we were talking about, I was showing you the explode the code, beyond the code, and get ready for the, uh, get set for the code books. So I was telling you about the get set for the code books, which if you look on this side, they have three of these. We did A in preschool. This year I hope to plan to uh, do just like B and C. Um, so this is B, we just, it just came in the mail, so um, I haven't even looked at, looked at it. It's all black and white. The pictures are fun though, the, you know, they're just, and the pages, they're fast to do. So in this, get set for the code, they're tracing letters, they're working on the sounds that the letter makes. Skipping forward here. That's pretty much the gist of that. Um, finding letters, this is actually looking at it, it's like almost exactly the same as, um, as A that we did. Identifying the letters and then circling them. Okay, then moving on to explode the code. This is explode the code four. They do have up to eight. For this, since my daughter has always kind of struggled with reading just a little bit, I, um, take this a step back. So this isn't totally at the level that she should be at, but it's at what I would consider a, a doable, easy level. Something that she can sit down and do on her own, not something that I have to sit there right with her. Um, does she like this? No, not particularly, but I think it is, does 
it teaches it really well. I really like that she, it can be independent work um, that she can do. So let's see, is this the start of a lesson? So to give you, I'll just start a lesson one here. To give you an idea how it works and once you, you know, go through, we started explode with Explode the Code 1, I think, the first book. Each book is laid out exactly the same. So once the child really learns the process of each page, it's much faster. Um, so starting out here, they learn some kind of rule, then they're instructed to, you know, do whatever they're doing. Um, so this one here, they need to draw a line between two words in the compound word. And then second page of that, then still they're working on those compound words, but they have a picture and you circle it. Then here they have the picture, you you know, circle what how to make that word and then write it. Level three is you have the word and then you find the picture and circle it. Here, this is just kind of sometimes we skip this page. Um, because I like her to do copy work, I mean, do this independently. And with this, a lot of times I come and sit down and she'll read it to me. So, so sometimes we do this page, sometimes we copy it. But it's funny little sentences like, can you sit on a flagpole? Yes or no? Um, so we usually, you know, do that page like maybe every other lesson. And then here they read part of the sentence and they have to find this word that goes up here. Here they read it, read the sentence, and then choose which one is going with it. What I like about this book, and sometimes what my daughter also will finally admit that she likes, is that these the sentences they come up with and the pictures are funny. It's not like anything you're going to see in other curriculum books. Um, so here, this one. The cupcakes on the sailboat are homemade. So here they have a little sailboat with two giant cupcakes on it. Um, here is a lamp with a fishbone on top. Oh, looks like she got that one wrong actually. No, it's a wishbone. It's the big fishbone is on the lampshade. The tomcat hunts in the trash cans. So it's kind of always like silly sentences with silly pictures. And then on the very last day, then they should know those words well enough to be able to look at the picture and you know be like okay cupcake and be able to spell it themselves so i really like that once you get to um in the explode the code books around like level three or level four you're ready to go to beyond the code one which this is reading comprehension now my daughter actually does really like this one so i'll just hear there um circling the parts that are similar in all the words. Here they're writing like play. It is fun to play. Then they write the word. Um, they're reading the sentence, matching it to the picture. Um, things that mean the same, like taps, wraps, pot, pan. Uh, they have to pick a word and write their own sentence. And then they get to read these stories about Zach the dog. So far they're all about Zach, this dog, and his like cranky owner. Um, and there's fun things you get to do with it too. Like here you get to put eyes and a collar on Zach the pup and color it. And uh, they ask questions like, is Zach a big dog? And you know, you're making these emoji faces. And uh, you think about it, you, they ask you questions, you answer the questions. So it's all laid out pretty similar. Um, but yeah, we're liking this a lot. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about handwriting without tears. I've used this with my daughter since preschool and I love it. Now, for in her second grade year, we didn't do any handwriting without tears for her. And then I went to get some stuff for my kindergartner and then I saw that they had all this stuff for older grades, which I think when I used it for a preschool for her, they didn't have all of the older grades. I could be wrong. But then, so I bought some stuff for my third grader, which I'm really excited about. So first let me show you what I have for my kindergartner. Um, she, she did one of these last year, I think it was called My First School Book. Now this one is letters and numbers for me. I really, 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 really like how these are laid out. Um, they teach it well. They're, it's a fast 
workbook page. There's coloring if you want to color for the kindergarten level, which I forgot to pull these out, but it comes with a little chalkboard where they practice writing the letters. And then if you see here, they're forming the letter F and they're forming those with um, pieces of wood. And I have all of the wood. So you have a stick, a long stick, and a short stick, and a short stick. So they make the letter F. They have curved, big curved ones and little curved ones, you know, so you can make a, an O or a C or, um, so she's, you know, be learning all her uh, letters in here really practicing the formation of the letter. They teach things like um, like a frog jump capital. You know, so like, well, here they are. Frog jump capital letters are F-E-D-P-B-R-N-M. So on all those letters, they're teaching that you start at the top, draw the line down, and then you frog jump back up to the top, and then do your next line. So they work on practicing all of that. So they have all their letters. Then towards the end, they start working on writing words lowercase letters. Um, then at the very end, they're working on punctuation and you know copying these sentences and then their number formation. So that's my kindergartner's book. And then I also have this for her called Building Writers, which I never did this with my other daughter because I don't think that they had this then. I don't recall it. So I'm excited for these. So, so far, we're new into these books. Um, so far, you know, she's learning that you are a writer and writers tell people what animals, people, and things do. So she's been copying these sentences, like bats eat bugs and bats are small. Okay. Okay. Um, sorry about that. When do bats sleep? Oh, look, help. So she's practicing writing those sentences Then she learned about um, narrative writing how it tells a story and we have first, next, and last. Um, let's see as we go through the story. But here she's gonna be learning about um, how nuts, nuts grow on, and then she's gonna pick which one, trees. Nuts, or nuts are food. Nuts grow on trees. Nuts are seeds. Um, again, first, next, last. Uh, here, write about going camping water park so and this is kindergarten um, so I'm excited for this this is gonna be interesting to see how well she does with it so there's that that's kindergarten now for my third grader uh, okay also this is also building writers so far she is really liking this we're going to be doing so much more writing this year than we have before, which again, I'm I'm excited for, she's excited for, which is exciting. And I think this is gonna help her, I think it's the missing link that we've had with her struggling with reading. Um, I think as she gets strong at writing, it's just gonna put it all together and her reading is just gonna become so much better. So um, let me, I need to go help my daughter real quick. I'm gonna pause this video and I'll come right back. Okay, I am back. We were talking about building writers for my third grader. This is um, level D, which the building writers that I got for my kindergartner is book A. Um, my daughter, she is excited about this one. I just love it when she gets excited about something. Uh, the first thing that she did was, they were, she was learning about feelings. Draw yourself happy and then write about something that made you happy. Draw yourself uh, sad, write about something that made you sad. <laughs> this is funny. Here's what made her sad. The time Dada ate all the cereal. Draw yourself scared. The time my sister wore Crocs in the desert because a little tiny snake went by past her foot. And then draw yourself angry. This was funny. She did not want to write about something that made her angry. And I was like, well, you have to write something. What makes you mad? And she didn't want to write anything about it. So she finally thought of something and this is what she wrote. The time when I had to write about being mad. That's what made her mad. I thought that was really funny. Um, so she was super excited about writing about all this. And when she starts writing, um, it's she actually seems to be quite a strong speller, which, um, I didn't really know, and she does do well with it. 
Here she was learning about acrostic poems. Um, this was all about a saxophone, and then she got to write the last half of the poem. And then she did another acrostic poem about accordion, and she wrote her own poem about an accordion. Um, again, and we're new into these books, we're new into the school year. So here she'll be writing about the boy that cried wolf, um, tells about the story. It then has the story broken into a beginning, middle, and end. I think she will be drawing a picture of it, writing the characters, the setting, and then the lesson of the story. So she'll be doing that for the Fox and the Crow. What else? Um, here's some riddles. Unscramble the letters. So what is full of holes but still holds water? And then they have the letters all jumbled up. Looks at the picture. She's like, oh, sponge. You need to try to figure out how to spell that right and um, write a sentence with the word, you know, scrambled, so she'll have to try to write a sentence with the word sponge in it. What else do they have in here? Um, there's lots of different writing. Here are they writing about this picture here. Writing your own stories, working on beginning, middle, and end, and your character, character development. Here's writing a recipe. Here's this recipe for this teddy bear toast, then creating your own recipe. My daughter will love that. She loves cooking. So really fun. Here's more like writing topics to write something about music, write something about history, our world, famous faces. Here's learning about Australian animals. Lots of really fun stuff in that book. Okay, then, um, she has very neat handwriting when she tries. Um, really good at her capital letters, not as strong at her lowercase letters. So I decided to get her printing power, which I think this is actually more considered second grade. Um, but this is gonna, you know, this really does, I, what I really like about these books, Handwriting Without Tears, is they just do a great job at teaching the formation of the letters. Um, so I got this for her so she can, you know, get uh, better at writing her lowercase letters. So we have that book. And then Cursive Kickoff. This is actually also, I think they considered a second grade book. I did buy the Cursive book for third grade and that came and we were about to start that. And then I saw that they had Cursive Kickoff, which she hasn't, um, she's kind of, We've kind of dabbled in some cursive and she loves it. And I, well, I was looking at this one and I decided to go ahead and get this, which is actually the second grade cursive book. So, but since we haven't really done any cursive, you know, I didn't mind jumping back to second grade and starting at the beginning. So, um, let's see, it starts out printing, which we might just skip the print part since we're doing printing power. You know, and then here it's teaching, again, it's gonna teach the um, formation really well. The negative that I've heard about, what some people don't like about this book, is that the cursive in this book is not as flowy and pretty, but um, I do really love flowy and pretty handwriting um, cursive, and you know, that this is more, you know, almost printed looking straight up and down, but that didn't mind, I don't mind that, because I'm familiar with these books, I really like how it's taught, and as she learns the cursive, then she can work on making it more flowy and pretty and we can get some other cursive books that are more creative looking. So, you know, it's teaching all of the, all the different cursive. So she's really excited for those. Oh, and then also, I can't show this to you because it's online, but with Handwriting Without Tears, they also have Keyboarding Without Tears, which we have signed up for and it's keyboarding lessons on your computer, and they will love that. So we have done quite a few of those, and they're doing really well with anyway, those. Anyway, okay, so the last uh, language arts thing that I'm gonna talk about here that we are doing is all about reading. And we've been doing this since the beginning. I really, 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 really like it. Uh, my daughter, who's in third grade, um, started out not liking it, but she really started out just, she's just never, Never been a fan of reading. Um, unlike, I think, my kindergartner, I think she's gonna grasp it a lot faster um, and you know pick up reading much easier than my third grader did. But that's okay, every child learns differently and has their strengths and their weaknesses, and that is okay. So, um, I have my kindergartners here, 
and my third graders here. So let's start with kindergarten. Kindergarten, it comes with this box and flash all the, they're not really flash cards. These are cards that you're gonna use with games in the, um, in the lessons. They all have pictures on them. And they come with these snazzy little ways to like organize the lessons so it's easy to find in that nice box. Then it comes with two books. Their activity book and the book for the teacher. This is gonna tell you all about the lessons. And then also it has these fun little maps. I mean, um, well, kind of like a map, their progress chart. So where they're gonna put a sticker on every lesson. Each time they do a lesson, they get to put a sticker on it. There's 78 lessons in this first one. And they come with the stickers too. So the lessons, um, I've talked, mentioned several times that I really like curriculum that is well laid out for the parent, the teacher. Things that are more scripted tell you really how to say it, um, how to teach it, and this does an excellent, excellent, excellent job at that. Um, I love it. So the lessons has the lesson. What you need to complete the lesson, you're going, you know, it says you're going to get this book. You need your child to do the worksheet out of here, um, and then you can choose some other activities to do along with it. Oh, and then it has in these books, there's always some game that you're going to be playing with your child. Here's the rhyming game, so you need to pull out the flashcards for that. Um, your, and then you read, they do the your their little workbook page, and you read a story in here. And this is for you to read to the child, not for them to read. The first book of these are simple little stories of whatever letter you're doing. Here's the letter G. And, you know, lots of here. Goodness, it's grinning guppies galore. There's a gentle friend in each guppy. Just don't walk it like a puppy. So really, really quick stories. And, you know, the stories have, some, you know, lots of words with the letter G or here's H for about a hippo, her hips hog, all of the path. Um, the second book is still then about letters. You know, it'll be like that day you're learning about letter D, but then it's just really neat, like poems and rhymes, and sometimes nothing even really to do with D, it seems like. I mean, this is about a, letter, a little deer, this is about a donkey, but the poems aren't like full of words with the letter D or anything, it's just kind of a theme. This is the dandelion. And these poems, they're they're really nice, really fun to read. I really enjoy reading them too. Um, the workbook. It is coloring pages for whatever letter you're learning. And then as you go further, after you've learned all your letters, then you're going back through the letters again, then it's gonna be like more of like a cut and paste kind of thing. So, you know, cut out the three pictures that start with K and glue them up here. And it comes with also Ziggy the Zebra, which my daughters love, and I have like the silly voice like, hi, I'm Ziggy the Zebra! And they think it's so funny and sometimes I start, stop talking like Ziggy with my normal voice and they're like, mom, talk like Ziggy. And they think it's hilarious. And sometimes I'm like, but it's hard on my throat. It makes my throat scratchy. But they love, I love Ziggy the Zebra. They love it. Okay, for my third grader, she is doing level three, which I think it's, um, at, at least where she is, I think it's grade level appropriate for her. For a really strong, really, really strong reader, this would actually be second grade. But for a not so strong reader, struggling reader, I would pair this with third grade. Um, so depending on who you talk to, we are either on track or a year behind. Um, I know quite a few people who do this curriculum as well. And I had told one mom that, did you know that level three is actually considered second grade? And she was like, what? I did not know that. And then she was like, I know a lot of moms who do it and they didn't know that either. So um, it doesn't seem to be super clear, but when you also look at their website, they 
this is more um, you know, second grade. So it just really depends on who you talk to and the how well your child reads. So it comes with the teacher's manual. Um, still the same, it's really well scripted. It's gonna tell you everything exactly how you're, what you're gonna do that day. Um, how to say it, how to teach it. They do have, which I didn't pull them out, but little um, tiles, they're like um, letter tiles. I don't use the letter tiles. We don't really particularly like those. Instead, I um, have a big whiteboard where, here's where they're usually would be using their letter tiles and you know, you or them are forming letters. For, for us, that just adds so much more time onto our lesson and always having to get our letter tiles organized again and every time I pull them out, it just added way too much to the lesson. So instead, I still go over everything about where they're talking about what to do with the letter tiles, but instead we do it on a whiteboard. Um, and my daughter seems to really like that and it goes faster than the letter tiles. They also have an app, which I've never used, but where you can do like the letter tiles on the app. Um, then there's workbook pages to go with it. Always fun. Um, they're new additions. When we first started this in kindergarten, uh, first grade, I think, it was black and white. But now, since then, all of their new additions are in color. So a um, lot of cutting, cutting and pasting, which is fun. Like, you know, for third grade, a lot of times they get out, you know, they don't get to do as much cutting and pasting anymore, but so she likes being able to do that. And kind of fun worksheet games. Um, not ever really anything where they're having to write. It's just more, you know, with their pictures and reading and, you know, stacking the words. They do then have um, a page of the words, you know, phrases taught that is going to have to do with the story that they're going to read. Their, work, their worksheet pages, I think, are really well done. Um, they've made it really fun for the child. You know, something that can at times be really frustrating and hard for a child learning to read. These are just so well done. Uh, this curriculum is very phonics taught. It is not sight word. They do teach sight words, but it's not like heavy in sight words where, you know, um, like in kindergarten, you have to know 200 sight words and you need to know all these. This is starting at the beginning. You learn all the phonics rules. Um, so there are sight words that maybe if you were learning, you know, just all sight words that maybe you would learn right away. But in this kind of curriculum, when you're learning phonics, you might not learn that even till, you know, the second level or something. Um, like some really easy phonic, like maybe I'm trying to, can't really think, but like maybe the word two, like T-O is super easy and that could be a very easy sight word, but they might not learn how to read two until, you know, later in um, or level two or later in level one because just the way how they're teaching their phonics. Okay, so this level comes with two books. Um, this is level three. Level, level one and level two I think came with, um, well, I think level two came with two books and I think level three has three books, or no, level one has three books. Anyway, um, let's see. This is volume one and volume two. So to give you the idea of the stories. Okay, here's Houseboat Summer. So that's, you know, that's what they're gonna be reading level three. So it's pretty good reading. To make this, um, to make these lessons not so overwhelming for my daughter, um, we take turns reading and also so it maybe goes a little quicker and sometimes it isn't quite as stressful for her. So, you know, she'll read, then I'll read, then she'll read. She'll read, I'll read, she'll read, I'll read. And she really likes doing that. Uh, when we, she really used to dislike reading a lot. And then I started doing that with her and I told her, you know what, let's, you don't need to read the whole story totally by yourself. Let's take turns. Um, I read, you read, we read. I read, you read, we read. And when we started doing that, suddenly her attitude of reading just drastically changed and she started to really like it, which was interesting. I wish I would have done that sooner. Um, 
So anyway, this is, um, oh, here's level, two. here's the second book. So halfway through the year, let me show you what, like some of the last. So at the end of level three, they, that's what they'll be reading. Which I would consider at the end of level three, when you can read that, you're a pretty, pretty strong reader. And I mean, she can, we're at the beginning of this, she can easily read this. It's not super fast, but she can read it just fine. Um, and these are always going on, on. This is always, you know, covering whatever they just recently learned in the level right before. So that is what I have for language arts. Now let's go on to the next subject. So the next subject that we're now going to talk about will be social studies, history, geography. I have some really good curriculums here, a couple brand new ones um, that we haven't used before that I am especially loving and we are super excited about. Even my daughters are excited about them, which is really cool. Okay, so first let's just let's start with the one that is going to be our main one. This is brand new that we have, we've um, done one whole unit so far in like two lessons and then an extra two, like two lessons. Um, so we've gotten into a, a little bit that I'm familiar with it now that to be like, I like this a lot um, and I am liking it a lot. Okay, so it comes with two of these big books. It is called Our Star Spangled Story and there's part one and part two. Um, I don't remember the grade range this is but it spans over many years it might be this might be considered all of elementary if I'm remembering right which when you're homeschooling it is so nice to be able to find something like this that can work for multiple grades because you only have so much time in the day and if you're teaching more than one child that's just more and more work that you need to be doing so if you can combine um, all your children's you know work all their um, history into just one lesson that is so nice so this is going to be American history and we have so far done unit one in this book these books they're very well written easy to understand um, nice pictures let's see try to turn to the beginning for you okay Really nice pictures. Um, both my kindergartner and my third grader are loving it. They like, um, it's not boring for them. You know, some history books can seem quite dry and boring. And these are not, these are fun and exciting. Um, this does come with also a CD and a lot of times at the end of each lesson, there might be a song that you can go listen to, maybe about that time or, um, is this one? And then at the end of each unit, there's going to be some activity that you get to do at the unit. At the end of unit one, we made Pueblonian pottery with, we made our own salt dough. And so like here is um, some pottery that my daughter's made. Now it's dry, it's been having to dry for, um, we let it dry for about a week. Didn't quite need to be that long, but next they wanna paint them. Um, there's some little ones that they did. So there is that. Um, and at the, when we get done with this, I mean, they're, they're going to know a lot of American history. This is, um, it is not secular. This is a religious curriculum, but I wouldn't say it is over the top at all. And I wouldn't let that scare you away because there's not a lot of it in here and you could easily skip over it if you wanted. The most, um, you know, where they talked about God a couple times was just in lesson one. And then so far after that, there's been no God references. The only thing that they have is at the very end of a lesson, they have some like prayer or Bible verse or something. Um, and it's separated like in blue. You could easily not read that if that you didn't feel comfortable with that. Um, 
So, yeah. So anyway, there's two books. This is considered a year's worth of curriculum, um, first semester, second semester. And obviously, if you don't get it done the whole year, just continue on, keep doing it the next year until you finish. Um, so the Star Spangled Story also comes with this book that's a timeline, super neat. It starts at the beginning and it goes along, you know, with what they're teaching in there. The beginning here. So it starts at the beginning, goes all the way through. And we're in 1516, 1800s. Yeah, it has pictures to go with everything. Um, you know, and little descriptions of what they are. So here's President Roosevelt broadcasting his first fireside chat. Um, so everything has just a little description. Oh, look, American, uh, or Wizard of Oz. It was 1939. I love that movie. Um, and it goes all the way to current day. So I think it ends in 2018. So not totally to current day, but close. Um, so it ends in 2018. And then it also comes with a Star Spangled Rhythms and Rhymes book. This would go along with the CD, the songs that are on it. We haven't, I think we've only listed like one song in here. So I'm not really first familiar with all of them or you know how much we're gonna like this, but we think it sounds pretty cool. There's your grand old flag. Just all sorts of little soldier boy, jitterbug. Songs to go with the time frame that you're reading about or about the topic you're reading about. And then also it comes with a workbook. You can buy these separately. So everything I just showed you is, um, and one of these is like a package of you buy all that together. And since I had a second, two students, I bought another workbook um, separately. The workbooks are easy, fun, um, quick, not overwhelming workbook art, just more fun workbook stuff. And it's just one page. So like for lesson one, it does a lot of drawing and coloring. They get to draw people from different countries um, or they could, or you could also write a paragraph um, about things that are the same and things that are different for people who live in different parts of the world. Um, here's lesson two, lesson three. So some writing. Some reading, a lot of drawing, some maps, designing your own teacup, coloring. So my girls like this a lot. Um, and I am really, really, really happy about this curriculum. Really like it. And my daughters love it too, and that is just a huge plus that they like it. Okay, next I'm gonna show you, which this kind of goes well, pairs well with um, that book, uh, The Star Spangled Story, is I'm doing, we're also doing a history pocket. It's from Evan Moore. They have other topics um, with their history pockets. Here's some examples on the back. They have like ancient Rome, the American Civil War, the American Revolution, um, Oh, and they're by grades here. There's grades one through three, and then they have intermediate ones that are grades four through six. Um, the grades one through three are ancient civilizations, life in Plymouth Colony, and American, Native Americans. Um, and then the older grades are the American Civil War, the American Revolution, ancient Rome, ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, colonial America, explorers of North America, and moving west. Um, so we are doing life in Plymouth Colony. And when we're done with that one, we'll probably then do Native Americans because that will pair well with our American history and then move on to ancient civil civilizations probably next year. Um, so this, you really only need one of these books. It um, doesn't matter how many kids you have because you have to make photocopies of this, unfortunately, even if you only have one child. That's the thing, I, only thing I don't like about this. Like for example, I took, so I took this page out and this is something that they're going to have to color and you know cut on all the dotted line. The reason why they can't just cut this page is because on the following page are the directions. Now, maybe you go ahead and look at these directions and you decide you don't need them. 
but on the following page are the directions or sometimes like something you have to read um, about like you know whatever you're doing next in the book so there is that um, so anyway I just make two copies since I have two kids so what you're doing with these history pockets you are making these you will need um, I don't remember how big it is but it's large, really large construction paper. It's like, like 18 inches by like, I don't know, what is it like 24 inches or something? Um, and that's what you'll be making. So they have the front cover, and then there is a folder pocket. And in this book, you make about I think it's like eight. Um, I guess they're like yeah, eight pockets full of projects. So the first pocket is all about the voyage to the new world. And then, then there'll be another pocket that, that is the new world. Then building a village, home sweet home, the family, working in Plymouth Colony, going to school, and what did the pilgrims give us? And in each pocket, so when you get to the new topic, you'll make a new pocket like this. You'll have something like this that you color and put on there. And then in each pocket they have, um, quite a few different activities. We're not done with this pocket yet. There's more activities we have to do. Different activities um, that you will be putting in that pocket. So here's one that are words to know. They had to cut out the words and the pictures, match them up, and then write the definition. This is my third graders for my um, kindergartner. I didn't have her write the definition. Instead, we just glued this flat and she just had to match the word to the picture. So you can, you know, kind of adjust it to make it um, fit your child's grade level. Here they colored a map, and then they had to put um, what happened in order. And here's, you know, something that we read about the Pilgrim's voyage to the New World. So there'll be more activities that we'll be putting in there in this particular pocket, and then we'll add more pockets as we go. And I just got those, like, uh, I think they're called Brad little tacks. Um, to hold all the pockets together because we'll have eight of them total. And this is my third graders and my, my kindergartners. So really liking that and they like it a lot too. Um, also by Evan Moore, I have two um, map geography books. This one, let's see, this is a second grade one. This is just geography practice. My daughters both really like these. It comes with a map and they're all different maps. Here is obviously a map of a house. And then there's, I only have one page here, but there are two pages of questions and they, um, I have my third grader read the, read the question and then you know, answer it. So lots of different maps. Here's a map of the globe map of North and South America. Here's a map of a park. Here is a map of kind of like a little town. And here are like, this is what the question pages look like. Really easy, um, easy to read. Nature park map. They're fun, my kids color them. Uh, for my third grader, you know, we do the map and she reads all the questions herself and answers them. And for my kindergartner, um, I just have her color the map and then we go over the questions, you know, just verbally. Here also by Evan Moore, this is Maps of the USA. This is a brand new book and we haven't actually started this yet. Um, I am, I have one that's arrived. I'm waiting on the second one so they can each have their own book. It goes over the states in alphabetical order. So starting with Alabama, it tells all about Alabama, everything that you might wanna know, has the shape of the state, where it is, um, it's a fun little fact, and it's gonna do every single state. Really easy, we're gonna be talking about states this year. So hopefully we'll, maybe hopefully get through all that. Okay, and then last, this is something that we just kind of do for fun, but you could definitely have this as a main curriculum of yours if you wanted. My girls love the Laura Ingalls books. We started with um, Little House in the Big Woods. That's the very first book we'd ever read. 
and they loved it so much. They were just obsessed with it. So we have so many more that we've got. Um, we have some more easy readers. The little house books. Here's an easy, easy reader. And then this is fun. I found this like, I think at a garage sale or a curriculum sale at some point. Um, really cool. And if you wanted to do something like this, if you could get your hands on this book, this is worth it. This is really neat. It's uh, the, called The World of Little House. And it first starts talking about, you know, Laura and her family. It has a map. It has the whole family tree. And then it's gonna start talking about each book. So this chapter two is all about Little House in the Big Woods. So we had read this since we had finished that book. Um, there's some neat pictures. And then also with each book, you get to do some activities. So here's like Ma's clove apples that they can make. And the molasses snow candy. We haven't done those yet, but we would really want to do those. So then um, the next chapter will be all about Little House on the Prairie and it will have some activities that you can do with that. Like here is, um, make it a nine patch quilt square. So really fun, they love it. And I forgot to pull it out, but I also have a, um, the Laura Ingalls craft book. And then also we have uh, Laura Ingalls, uh, like Little House on the Prairie paper dolls, which we cut out and they have all the clothes and the girls really love setting that up and playing with those. So on to our next subject. I think our next, oh, we're getting through it. Let's see, our next subject, I'm going to talk about science. Okay, next we're gonna be talking all about science. So I have some really fun science books here that we're going to be focusing on this year. Let's start with, we're gonna start with this. This actually wasn't something that I was particularly planning, but my daughters got, pulled these out, they keep pulling them out and looking through them. And then they were asking if they could start learning about this. So we are gonna be going through these. Um, one is Elements, one is The Rock Gem. These are Smithsonian books. And I actually purchased these at Costco. As you can see, they were only $14.99. They're really, really great. And they find them really interesting. So right here in the Elements, it starts with um, the periodic table, which we learned about the other day. And then they, I didn't go, I'm not going in order. I was just kind of more, since this is something that they are really wanting to learn about, I'm kind of gonna go with the flow and go with their pace and what they're really wanting to learn. So they had turned to a page and we were learning about carbon. Um, let's see if I can find it here, let's see. So the first thing they really wanted to read about this pink diamond, which then, so we read that, which then we read all about carbon. And they didn't know how diamonds were formed, but after reading this, they're very knowledgeable about it. Um, so interesting. They even, my husband took them on a field trip into the garage because they went up and asked him if they had any saws that were coated with tiny diamonds and he was like sure let's go see him and then while they were in there my third grader asked him if he knew that about that some batteries have a graphite core and he had no idea so she became very knowledgeable about all this and my third my i mean my kindergartner too and then when we do this they have a collection of you know fop their special finds boxes with um, rocks and all sorts of things that they find. So they get those out and kind of play with all that. Um, then we also have this rock and gem. So just the other day we were learning about, um, oh, shells. So we did the whole, they also have boxes of shells. So whenever we go to the ocean, we collect a lot of shells. So we did a whole shell unit that day. They looked through all their shells. Uh, um, we read each picture about the shelves. They took shelves that they shelves that they had that were similar, like trying to match up. We were learning about what they were, 
Um, so there are, there's a lot of pages of these shelled for, for shells. These books have great pictures, really fun and informative. So with these, I plan to kind of just go with what they're wanting. And we're kind of, this is like kind of a unit study that we're doing and how long it will last, I don't know. We'll just kind of see how they're doing with it. Um, next, I'm gonna show you, this is a new book that I got. I am also, I'm, it's grades one through six, which I like. So I can use it for, you know, span of multiple grades. And we obviously won't get through this whole book this year. It'll be a book that you know, we pull out for different years and whatever we're learning about. I'm waiting on a second copy. So each of my daughters can each have their own copy. So I don't have to always make photocopies of everything. And this book is really fun for workbook style. It has different sections. So here is a section all about life science. And it's going to be, there's gonna be so much fun coloring here. Here they're learning about plants and roots and I'm just gonna flip through all the life science. So lots of different things, some reading and parts of the seed, labeling. So let's see, so we have plant science, then it here gets into different insects, life cycle of a butterfly, what is an insect, labeling insect, you get into reptiles, amphibians. Birds, there's a bird section, mammals, prehistoric animals, here's the human body. I think in this book, what we're probably going to focus on first is the human body, unless, just I don't, I was wondering if they have something to go with our rocks and elements. I don't think they do. Um, so human body will be our first one that we do. Body puzzles, teeth. This will be a fun body puzzle. They get to cut out the skeleton and make their own skeleton. Um, then there it gets into environmental science. There's habitats, endangered species. And there's a lot of pages to go with each topic that I'm saying. Recycling, weather, air, water, magnets, geology. Oh, here we could do some geology for what we're learning in our other books. Electricity, lights, sound, matter and energy, simple machines, Space science. And that is it. So this will be a really cool book to use. Um, when we do the body section, I plan on that we're going to do some body units this year. So I do have these two things. This is a See Inside Your Body by Usborne. And it's one of those lift, lift the flap books. So like that, which they really like these books. And they make, this they make the topics fun and interesting, engaging for all ages. So when we do science, we often don't do a lot of worksheets for science. We're always doing science like when we're reading about something. Um, so having something like this is very different for us this year than what we would normally kind of do. Here's another book that I got from Costco. This was $13.99, The Human Body. So when we do our body unit, we have this too. This is cool. So each page, it has something that it takes away. It takes away the skeletal, skeletal system. And then you talk about that. It talks about the digestive system the urinary system, the circulatory system, the respiratory system, muscular, and nervous. So this is a by Uncover, the human body. OK, 
Okay, when we're doing the human body, I have this book, which this is Crabtree Publishing Company. I'm not sure where I got this book from. I think I also got this from like a curriculum sale or something. Linking art to the world around us already facts our bodies and art activities. So these are activities and art, arty kind of things and crafts that you get to do um, relating to the body. So here they're talking about bones and they get to make their own skeleton man. Let's see what there's some fun. They're learning about finger t uh, fingerprints here. So they're making fingerprint, um, little fingerprint animals, fingerprint bugs and uh, lots of fun things. Let's see what else they have here. Here is, um, they're learning about fitness and making a paper mache kid, like maybe he's like running or kicking a ball. What else? Lots of fun stuff. Here's another paper mache. Again, learning about throwing and catching, making a paper mache ball. Uh, breathing, oh, this one looks fun. This is breathing machine, learning how the lungs work. And you get to make your own, you need fabric and cardboard and paint for this and make your own breathing machine. So we plan to do some things like this um, when we talk about do our body unit. Um, so that'll be fun. Let's see, and let, one more thing. I have quite a few of these books. I just pulled out one of them, but I have different books like this. All, they're all for us born, really great books where this is 50 science things to make and do. I have a lot of like, you know, science experiments, um, but fun things. And what kid does not like um, science experiments? Here's wind power, caterpillar search, making gloop, a chiming fork, so many different fun activities to do for science. So always great to have a book like this on hand. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is art and then that is it, okay. So now I'm gonna talk about our art curriculums that I have. So I have several new ones here that we haven't used yet, but we're very excited. And then I have two that I've had for a while and um, have some really cool things in it. So first I'm gonna show you this one called Art Treasury. I love this book. It is a book from Us Born, and it is just so well done. It takes uh, famous paintings and it talks about them, gives you the hit, this one gives you the history of it, and then you get to create your own C print. Um, this one's not the same painting, but you'll create your own C print. Let me show you some other cool ones here. Let's see. So here they talk about Starry Night, famous Van Gogh picture, and then you create your own. And just beautiful pictures. They give you really well step-by-step -step instructions of how to do it. Very easy for any age. I'll show you a couple others. So, and they all do whatever painting that you're learning about. It shows the painting, you learn all about it, the history of it, you might learn the artist, and then you create your own painting. This is one of my favorite art books that we have. It's so well thought out and great for all ages. I'm just gonna flip through, you can see some of them. I'm not gonna show all of them. Oh, so we did this one. We did water lilies. So this is a famous painting by Monet and we read all about it and then we created this. And it was so easy really cool. The finished product for both of my girls, it was amazing. It was really neat. And it's all made from tissue paper. But everything, all the materials that you're going to be using in this are materials that you're either going to have at home or 
you'll easily be able to you know, get. It doesn't take a lot. Here's one where you're making little statues, foil figures. So I highly recommend this book. This one looks fun. This is spin painting. And then you get to make your own on a paper plate. So I highly, highly, highly recommend this book. It is so good. So many cool things in there. I have another book here from Usborn 2. This is Usborn, the Usborn Complete Book of Art Ideas. This book is massive. It's really big. I mean, this has everything in it. This one is different as in, you know, it has different art projects that you're doing. It's not, this one's neat because it takes famous paintings, discusses the famous paintings, and then you're going to recreate something like that. And this one just has lots of different um, art ideas in it and different techniques to use. Different materials. If you were going to choose between the two, I'd probably choose the Art Treasury, but this one's really cool too. Um, this one's a lot more extensive. I just really like how this one incorporates famous paintings into it. Okay, and then I'm going to show you Artworks for Kids. This is by Evan Moore, and it grades one through six. So this is... It's gonna have various art projects in it. Um, it is broken up into categories. So there's a first section is all about painting and then weaving, then clay, printing, recyclables, nature, classroom, art gallery. Um, so as you can see here, the book is different colors. So the purple section is painting. So I'll show you a couple of painting things. With these, there is a, it shows you the picture that you're going to be creating a let's talk about it, a vocabulary that you can discuss. It gives you the list of materials that you're going to need, some project notes, you know, for you, and then steps to follow how to create that. This one looks especially, I think, fun to do, the snowy forest. So you have a painting and then it jumps into weaving and so, you know, here the classic like weaving with construction paper, making a paper mat, woven landscapes, um, making your own woven baskets with paper, with construction paper. Then, then you have the clay. So for this section, you're obviously gonna need to purchase clay, unless you wanna maybe possibly make your own like salt clay. Uh, which is pretty easy to make with um, salt and water and flour. Making your own beads, your own pinch pots, coil pots, which we actually just recently did that with our social studies, except we made a the salt dough and we made a coil pot. Okay, then let's see, after the clay section, it goes to printing. So here, like for example, this one, you take a piece of paper, you fold it in half and you squirt uh, different colors of um, paint on one side and then you're going to close it and it will print it on both sides. Um, this one's fun. This is a bubble print. So you're going to be having colored bubbles that you blow at your paper. I've always wanted to do that with my kids. That'd be neat. Here's some string prints. Okay, then after prints, let's see, what do we jump into? Recyclables. Whoop. Some cool things there. Paper mache trays, that looks neat. Containers. This is taking an old milk jug. 
um, window hangings with a foil cookie pan or a pie pan. And some tin can luminaries. And let's see, after, then you coach jump into nature. So there's handmade paper. We've been really wanting to do that. Gourd rattles, pine needle dolls. I actually made these when I was a kid in a social studies class. It's like exactly. Um, sand candles, all sorts of stuff, making yarn. So that's a fun book. Again, that's by Evan Moore. And the last thing I wanna show you is Draw Right Now. This isn't just art. This is, I use this for language arts. Um, but it teaches how to draw and it comes in this nifty box to keep it all organized and here are all the books this is if you would buy or to buy the whole collection you can buy these individually they're about like $15 each if I remember correctly I think the whole collection when I bought it was about 85 um, and it has how many books eight books in all all on different topics. So how it starts is, so this book six is animals and habitats on land, ponds and rivers and oceans. And it's going to have an example of your picture, something written about whatever you're drawing, and then step-by-step -step instructions of like how to draw this butterfly. And I have these, which you don't have to have these, but I think they're not that expensive and I think it's really worth it. These blank workbooks. So here they get to draw a picture of themselves and write their name. And then they would open it to this page, you know, lay it flat. And this is where they're gonna draw their picture and then they do their copy work and write it down here. So this works really well for reading my daughter's practicing reading copy work spelling learning how to draw the picture and coloring it and whatever the topic is on it might cover something that could um, do be good for science or social studies um, just really cool depending on what we are learning about i often go to these books and pull something from it um, so if we're learning about space, I'm gonna look through these and see if there's anything that has to do with space or the United States, here's the United States. Maybe you're learning about the United States and you could um, turn to this one and draw the Statue of Liberty. And to give you an idea of like what, it, of what these say, um, Americans are proud to be free. They can make choices, they can shape their future they can voice their ideas. So it's a simple read, but it does really well. You know, it's a quick little read and um, it's a good little description of kind of, you know, what they're learning about. So this one is the United States from sea to sea and moving forward. Here, there's a book on the polar regions, the Arctic and the Antarctic. And then there is a Native Americans, North America, and the Pilgrims. We've been learning about the Pilgrims, so I am gonna come to this book and you know find something on the Pilgrims. Or maybe we'll do, you know, spend a week doing all of them. So like for the Pilgrims, here's what I get to pick from. Here we have the Pilgrims in England. That's probably actually what we'll do first because we were just learning about in England. The Pilgrims in Holland, Sailing to America, Plymouth, Squanto, that's all for that one. So, I mean, that, all of those work perfect for, to go with what we are learning about right now. So these are really fun because they can hit on multiple subjects just in one activity. Um, we have Christopher Columbus, Autumn Harvest, and the Weather. 
This book is On the Farm, Kids and Critters, and Storybook Collections. This is book one. This is the very first book that I had started with, so I had originally just bought this book. And I loved it so much, and my kids liked it, so I decided to buy the whole set, which I think was very much well worth it. This one is definitely geared, probably the easiest and geared towards uh, little ones more, with all the farm animals, and it's a little bit easier reads also, They're pretty easy to read. Uh, this one is Animals of the World Part 1, Tropical Forest, Northern Forest, and Forest Down Under. And as you can see, so this is book 7. The reading has got quite a bit more difficult than it was in book 1. And book 8, so this is the last book of their series. Again, it's Animals of the World Part 2 savannas, grasslands, and mountains and deserts. So I highly recommend this draw right now. You can't go wrong with it. Definitely anybody should be adding it to their collection of um, curriculum. Or even if you're not homeschooling, this is just awesome to have around. So that is it. Thanks so much for watching.